Hello, my name is Annie, and today I'm introducing Meg Peters. Meg is one of the sweetest girls in our class. She always has a bright smile on her face and never fails to laugh at your joke, no matter how lame it might be. <laughs> Meg is hardworking, friendly, beautiful inside and out, passionate, and an amazing friend to our class. I know she has great things to say, so without further ado, here it is. The one and only Margaret Hyde Peters. The art of forgiveness is hard to master. It's inevitable that we will come across people in our lives that will wrong us in some way. We have no control over someone else else's actions. However, we do have control over how we react to these people and situations. What I have realized is that refusing to forgive essentially gets you nowhere. Holding a grudge does not keep you from compromising your integrity or who you are. It just stops you from furthering relationships and trying to get past what was said or what was done. We need forgiveness, which in turn means that we need to be willing to forgive. In the Lord's Prayer, there is a line that states, and forgive our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Sunday after Sunday, I have been reciting the Lord's Prayer for as long as I can remember. But the thing about repetition is we often forget what, that there is reason behind what we are doing or saying. I think we do this all the time. We just go through our day's routine forgetting the meaning behind it all. When I recited that prayer, I would just be unconsciously saying words, words that I never even stopped to think what they mean. Yes, I understood that God was full of grace and love, but I never fully grasped the full idea. But then someone shone a light over my confusion. We are asking God to forgive us in the same way that we should be forgiving those around us. This means that the person you are least willing to forgive is equal to the amount that you are asking God to forgive you. The inability to forgive someone is often a result of jumping to conclusions or holding on to tired grudges. However, we don't always know his or her full story. I believe that people are inherently good and the world is virtually a friendly place. I'm quick to look for the good in people because I believe that first and foremost, people strive to be good, to please others, to please ourselves. I believe that what you get out of the world is what you put into it. So if you choose to be friendly, if you choose to forgive, the world will mirror what you reflect onto it. I was the girl in the lower school knitwoods club that had hand cramps after knitting because I tried to make each stitch perfect. I was the girl in middle school that went through a phase of crimping her hair every single day because I couldn't stand waking up with my hair, without my hair completely straight. I'm still the girl in high school that will erase and rewrite a single letter again and again until I believe it looks perfect. Call it OCD or call it whatever you want, but I used it, used it as an excuse for why I tried to perfect anything and everything. I used to exhaust myself aiming for the unachievable idea that is perfection, not able to forgive myself for anything less. But eventually I was able to come to terms with the fact that I was never going to be 100% happy with everything I did. I began to cut my slack, myself the slack I deserved. I finally came to the terms, came to terms with not always being able to reach the high bar I set for myself. I learned to forgive myself for my imperfections. The art of forgiving yourself might just be even harder to master. But I think it's partially due to the fact that we are a lot harder on ourselves than we deserve. We are too critical of our mistakes, never giving ourselves enough credit. The endless criticism of our mistakes stems directly from the lack of belief that we are enough. In fifth grade, my friend Virginia taught me a little something about forgiveness. She was supposed to be the new girl in town, but yet she acted like she had been here forever. Not only did she stand taller than I, but she also stood with a confidence that shy fifth grade Meg longed to find in herself. We all heard her big mouth down the hall, <laughs> but not everyone got to know her even bigger heart. She disrupted the little bubble that I had grown all too comfortable living in, and I'm glad she did. 
She waltzed into 60, per 60 Perkins extended with no intentions of changing anyone's life, but she undeniably made a mark on mine. She helped me write a portion of my story that would have been a little different without her. God is funny like that. He places people in our lives that we may not always understand the reasoning for. But I'm glad I can see now why he chose to put Virginia in mine. She came into my life and taught me not to take life too seriously all the time. She taught me how to care just enough. She taught me that we need to all offer ourselves grace just as we wish others would because the world goes on and everything that might seem life shattering now will eventually fade with time until we see it as just another bump in the road. We spend too many of our days weighing down ourselves with stress and worry, but we can't be so hard on ourselves about things we can't do anything about. Learn to not set the impossible expectation of perfection for yourself and try not to presume perfection from others either. Allow yourself a little room to make mistakes and trust that someone will be there to offer forgiveness. After all, the art of forgiving isn't always easy to master, but that doesn't mean we still shouldn't try, strive to practice it. Whether it be forgiving yourself or someone else, we all may need a little help along the way. I know I still do, but we can do it. And all it might take is a little push from a friend like Virginia. Thank you.